study preachings. They are willing to go for Sunday school. Later on, there will be some who will be willing to take on certain level of commitment. Ta. That's why the next thing is coming up with a Bible school. In Bethany, 1954, in fact, the work started early 50s. Ta. Pero the organizing church February 14, 1954, and noong June, I would like to believe, ng 1964, nag-start ang Baptist Bible College. That's one of the next things. Kasi meron ng ilang members na, ano, you will just let them sit down with the rest of the members. If they are willing to learn more next time, they should be part of your team. They can also teach, so you want them to be trained. So the next challenge is a Bible College. And, isa din thing, yung mga anak ninyo, yung mga bata, sometimes you just let them go through public schools. And sometimes the influence of the public schools and other schools are not so good. We teach from the Word of God here. Pero outside, meron sa inyo tutunan na mga bagay that are not consistent with what is being taught in the church. And ayaw natin sila mo po youth. And I've seen that in some churches. The next challenge, kama po ito na so that they would be instilled with God's truths even at a young age. So that when they are old, they would not depart from it. And eventually, kung kaya pa, magkaroon ng Christian college. Praise be to God. And at this point, better than us come to that point that we have a Bible school, an academy, and a Christian college. Praise be to God for that. These are ministries to train and equip believers to become more effective members and leaders of the church. So I'd like to point out, whatever skills developed in these educational ministries, I'd like to emphasize, they must be used, most importantly, in the church. Kaya nga nagkakaroon ng ganyan eh. Kasi nag-start tayo with the church. So if we have these educational ministries, whatever things that we learn from them, we ought to be using primarily also in the church. Okay? Bible school, Bible college graduates, they are, you are, we are all expected to teach, to witness, to preach, and to be the ones handling the Bible studies. Why? Kaya nga tayo nag Bible school eh. In the first place. Academy, those who realize that you have developed these talents, like, kaya mo palang magpaint, kaya mo palang mag storytelling, mag preaching. Does that end there that we learn na kaya ko pala to? Again, kaya nga tayo na educational ministries so that these skills be developed and then used para sa gawain ng Panginoon. Kaso na minsan nalalaman natin, maganda kasi yung stress eh. Kaya nga yung conventions, these are good. Why? Minsan din mo na-realize na kaya mo pala. Kaya ko palang mag-orate, kaya mo palang mag-painting after you go to the stress of coming up with something. Kasi pag walang ganun stress, hindi mo naman talaga ma-realize that you can do the drawing and the painting eh. So, you go through the convention, you get through the period, and then you realize, kaya pa na. Na-realize ng iba na, they can sing because they joined in the ensemble. But the problem is that after the competitions, they just learn that, that we have these skills at nag-end na doon. The end point is that these be used in the Church. Kasi ang start nyo nito ay church. Kaya lang nagkaroon ng educational ministry so that ma-equip ang members to be using these skills sa church. Okay? I know what you're all seeing this. Ha? Huh? Christian college students, I hope you're also considering all the opportunities to teach. That is, your craft, your vocation. In other schools, they have their practicums only at the junior level, after junior level. But you, Christian college students, you can teach every semester. May VIC tayo. May Sunday school tayo. May extension classes. You can get to practice your teaching skills in all those instances. Okay? Remember, the educational ministries are there to equip believers to become more effective in fulfilling the Great Commission. Now, as teachers and as leaders of educational ministries, and some of us are teachers here, and leaders of educational ministries, this, this, ought, to be, this ought to be the question we will be asking ourselves. 
are my students, are our students becoming more effective and involved in fulfilling the Great Commission? Kasi kung hindi, we might be missing the mark. Kaya nga may education ministry so that the students who go through Bible school, academy, LWBC, become more equipped in fulfilling the Great Commission. And as a student of these education ministries, we have to ask, I have to ask myself, am I improving in my skill towards the fulfillment of the Great Commission? But hindi, we might be missing the mark. So these are things that we must ask ourselves. Now, because you students and teachers, now I would like to challenge the church. On the other hand, these are just educational ministries to help equip, nurture, and strengthen the members of the church. But the Great Commission is given to the education ministries, to the church, to the church. Okay? Possible danger nito yung peril of privilege. Na meron na tayo yung church natin umabot na sa point na meron tayong educational ministries unlike the other churches and yet tayo pa na members ng church ang hindi nakaka-fulfill ng Great Commission. Okay? Um, I just like to share my experience, no? Uh, you might be wondering kung bakit ako ganito umitin. Alam ni Ma'am Linya. <laughs> Alam ni Lati Tess yan, no? Every Saturday, may door knocking doon. May door knocking and give tax distribution doon. Talagang, iba kasi yung init din doon. It's, you don't sweat a lot and ang painful ng heat. Talagang mahapdi sa balat, no? At paggabi naman napakalamig. Pero we go out. At ang mga kasama ko doon, mga nanay, mga young people, I was thinking, Bible students? Wala. Wala sila Bible school pa. Pero the one that, the ones who are doing the work, I don't remember sa the church. Okay? I'm, uh, kasama ko sa cars, we see Ate Joni, Kuya Alvin, and their daughter, Alisa. Si Alisa, very, ano nga eh, um, kaya niyang mag-Spanyol eh. Eh, marami kasi Mexicans doon. She, she gives them hola. Then they converse. Ako hanggang hola lang ako. Ito na. <laughs> Nababay na. <laughs> Pag Spaniard, no? And ang katim ko talaga sa door-to-door, si Brother Wilby. Siya yung ka-partner ko sa door-to-door. So, ang thing nito, may pinitrint out. Di ba may Google Maps naman? So, may Google Maps na nandun yung street plan at pinaprint yun at naka-highlight yung area na assigned sa amin. So, another group may another highlight na naman. Ibang highlight na area. So, alam mo, at after a certain period, na-cover. Let's say, ang um, Koreatown. It's something that we can do here also. Para masabing na nasaturate natin ang isang lugar. No? Talagang, minsan nga, nag-resubit, as nakita ko yung MZ's tabla, Oy! Uh, you only have up to there, huh? we are, it's our group that's involved in this part. Okay, no problem. So, ganun. We are assigned certain spots, no? Okay, now I, be, I began to think, why don't we replicate this in Bethany? And the first thing that comes to me, we can do this with the Bible students. But then I check myself, <gasps> Am I also falling into the trap? Kasi bakit ang una kong naisip by the students? Hindi ba dapat una kong naisip church? Ba't parang iniisip ko ng mga tipo, patayad ba yan? Yung mga nini, patayad ba yan? Parang naisip ko, ang hirap. Pero ito, it may be limit. Pero dito, I can only imagine that happening if I do it with the Bible students. Then, that is a dilemma na ako mismo I fell into. Why am I thinking in this way? Why am I thinking na ang Bible students ang gagawa nito to think that the Great Commission was given to the church? Again, there's nothing wrong with letting the Bible students become involved because that's part of their training. But to think na Bible students lang, there's a problem. They can join. That's part of their training. But it's primarily given to the church. And this is something that we have to check on ourselves. How involved am I? Kasi, minsan inisip natin VIC, parang it looks like as if 
Naawa na nga tayo minsan kay pastor. Eh. He keeps on inviting. Pero ba't ang huli? Sino ba ang tatayo sa judgment seat of Christ? Si pastor lang ba? Bahawat isa. In fact, he's giving us opportunities para masabihan ng Panginoon, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. He ought not to sound like he at is dragging people in. At parang naawa na tayo sa kanya. Hindi eh. He's actually giving us these opportunities for us to be able to stand before God knowing that we have done our part here where we are. We have shined as lights where we are. Okay? So, we must be reminded that it is not confined to them. In fact, it is given to the church to be accomplished by the members of the church. For instance, funeral services, evangelistic meetings, soul winning, DIC. Bakit ang unang pumapasok sing sa school by the students? So, ad- ako din, inapek ko eh. Uh, this is not generally just for you. Ako din. I'm, I'm pointing also to myself. Dapat ang una ko naisip Bible students. Pag naisip ko evangelistic, funeral services, soul winning, door knocking, bakit Bible students agad? It should be everyone. And I'm pressing now some people, we remember that time. Yung red na fiera ba yun? Sinasakyan natin pa nag-iikot. Mga families yung kasama ko doon. Isa pa ako sa mga alalay nun eh. We go around. Diba? We are dropped out in a certain place, extension classes. Diba? There was a time na ang involved sa Sunday school are the members. And I'm looking forward to that time to happen again. Kasi the Great Commission was given to the church. There's nothing wrong with us training the Bible students, but the Great Commission is given to the church. Okay? Naalala ko tuloy, ito kasi, na we fall into this trap na ginawa noonin. Dala-dala natin yung doktrina ng kabilang panalampalataya. Eh. They were the ones who separated the clergy and the laity. Ano yung clergy? Ano yung laity? Ang katabi ng summer, hindi. <laughs> clergy. Ang clergy, sila yung mga nag-work sa church. At the, yung the other part, sila naman yung uh, attendees lang. At nagkaroon tayo ng ganong mentality. Eh, sinabi nga, walang priest, lahat tayo priest. Diba? So we have to take part in this also. Naalala ko pa, I also was able to attend the missions, na-rebuke na naman ako dito, missions conference sa uh, Long Beach. Okay? At naalala din ako dun. The church started in 1898 pa. No? Of course, it also had some troubles. But when I was there, Umatay na kami nila, Sister Joni. Ganyan. Tapos, meron silang Cambodian choir, may Korean choir, may Filipino choir, may Hispanic choir, tapos may English choir. Okay. So, ginagamit talaga ng matindi ng Lord yung church. And then afterwards, okay. Announcement ng pastor. Okay, after missions conference, this coming Saturday, our uh, missions conference closes tonight. And tomorrow we will be having soul winning, a regular soul winning. And I hope you're also present. Because, sad comment niya, isn't it quite hypocritical if we are not present for soul winning and we had just had our missions conference? Oh no. Parang pinamaan din ako, oh nga no. Naging missions conference tayo, pero pag involved sa soul winning, sa lokalit, hindi na tayo involved. Oops. So that's something that we have to remember. Okay? So, if I am a member of Bethany, we have to ask, how am I with my involvement in soul winning when it comes to evangelism? For baptism, how am I involved in the follow-up and in the integration of believers into the body? So teaching, how am I involved with the church's teaching ministry? Am I discipling someone? So, individually, though the great commission is given as a church, as members of the church, we can check ourselves on these areas also. Okay? First is, what yung description, no? This description ng ating gawain. The manpower, what is the manpower? What is the human resource? The church. And duration, what is the duration or the time involved in the stewardship of the mysteries of God? It is from one generation to another. I'd like us to read from Deuteronomy chapter 11 verses 18 to 21. Deuteronomy 
chapter 11 verses 18 to 21. These are some texts na nadaanan natin in the past. And these are very familiar with you. You shall therefore lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children. Talk about, ano, no? becoming two words talaga, no? Talking of them when you're sitting in your house, and when you're walking by the way, when you lie down and when you rise. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and in your gates. Let your days and the days of your children be multiplied in the land that the Lord swore unto your fathers to give them, as long as the heavens are above the earth. When I read this, I thought, hindi ba parang overkill naman ito? Ha? You shall bind them as a sign on your hand. They shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them with your children talking about them when you're sitting in your house and when you're walking by the way, when you lie down on your rise. We shall write them in the doorposts of your house and your gates. No? Di ba overkill naman? Until there were some references na dinaanan. I'd like a story from Judges chapter 2 verses 9 to 11. Judges chapter 2 verses 9 to 11. We're talking about the multitude who went to the wilderness. At ilan nalang nakapasok sa kanila sa promised land? Ilan na lang? If you're still listening, how many enter the promised land? Ilan? Two. And they, they are? Joshua and Caleb. Okay. So, I'd like to read verse 9. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timna Teres, in the mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill Gaash. And all that generation were gathered unto their father, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and served Balaam. And they forsook the God of their fathers, which brought them out of the hand of e land of Egypt, and followed the other gods, of the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. Wow! There was a generation who saw the miracles in the wilderness. They were wiped out. And there was a generation that were there in a Shabbat promised land. And all the generation were gathered unto their fathers. And there arose another generation of them which knew not the Lord. Wow! Panginoon generation lang nakalimutan na ang ginawa ng Panginoon. And that is also a challenge that we have as Bethany to ensure na yung susunod na generation meron pa rin zeal and fervor that we've had once. Kasi it is, ako, nag-recall yan eh. The first batch, the first generation, okay. Nakalamdam ng miracles ng Lord. Second generation, they were just talking about the miracles of the Lord. Third generation, iba na. I'd like us to open to 2 Chronicles 26. 2 Chronicles 26. Second Chronicles 26. Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in the rule of his father Amaziah. And he built, he built Elah and restored it to Judah after that the king slept with his fathers. 16 years old was Uzziah when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and 2 years old in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was also Jechaliah of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah did and sought the God in the days of, his, of Zechariah who had understanding of the visions of God and as long as he sought the Lord God made him to prosper however so he was right no he was okay however he had a problem he did something that was just reserved to be done by the priests okay and the next chapter after that Jotham Jotham was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name also was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. 
And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father Uzziah did. Howbeit he entered not into the temple of the Lord. And the people did yet corruptly. So yun na, hindi na siya nag-enter sa temple. Siguro may sama pa siya ng Lord on what happened to his father because of the father's mistake. The next generation, Ahaz was 29 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. But he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord like David his father and he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel and made also molten images of Balaam. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom and burnt his children in the fire after the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. Wow! So chapter generation nawala na. Totally. No more trace of the goodness that the Lolo did. Now the challenge is this. How do we ensure na magpapatuloy? Kasi ayan yung, kaya nga, kung babalikan natin ulit yung binasa natin sa Deuteronomy, kaya pala ganoon lang katindi, ang reminder. You shall therefore lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be sprinkled between your eyes. Kaya ganoon lang reminder, why? Because ang bilis ng tao makalimot. If one generation was hot in serving the Lord, the next, they can just be attending the church. And the next, huwag natin alam. Question, how, if we as parents, no, you as parents, we as right now in the leadership position, how are we ensuring that the next generation would also have the same, own the faith, Hindi na, hindi na, kasi ganito yun, hindi dapat mangyari ng second generation, ng third generation. Every generation should be the first generation. Kasi pagdating yung third generation, alam nyo na nangyayari. One generation should always be the first. We should own the faith. Ay ako tanggatin na yung father ko ay nasa pastor, father ko ay nasa Dapat may experience din ako with the Lord. Ako din mismo. Should own that faith. It's not just passed on to me. We should not agree na second generation Christians than tayo. And how are we doing that? And like, and I'm, I'm not sure if you still remember John and Denise. Yung from London dati na umatin dito. Denise, yeah, you remember them? No? Um, matangkad na payat. And the, when they attend, she wears skirt mga si Denise, no? Kasi they're from London. I asked them, why is it, how is it that you think nangyari yan sa London? That for a time, kayo pa ngayon ng King James 1611, and there was even a place sa England na pinoporture yung questions. I think na-mention ni Ma'am when in some place they, they visited, and I read from history books na that was a place na ang mga Christians ay ginagamit as torches whenever they're having a party. Tapos ngayon, ng England ay ganito na, they have entered a post-Christian era na mention niya, perhaps in one generation they really wanted to serve the Lord and they were really dedicated to God but then the next generation they just did it because they were told to do so because sino kinalakihan nila the third generation, siguro the next generation after that they started to me, why, why, why are you still doing this? we don't really like doing this anyway and then perhaps the next generation they stopped Siguro yung uh, the generation na plastikan sila sa salili na why, why do we have to do this these motions na hindi naman natin naramdaman at magtindihan kung bakit why do I still have to attend this or what ayun na hindi na ipasa from one generation to another okay each generation should come to a point that they would own the faith that was once delivered to the saints not second generation third generation parents Will we accept, tanggap lang ba natin that the zeal for the Great Commission ends in us? Are we doing our part so that our kids be saved? And then, that they also be prepared for the judgment seat of Christ. Dapat nga, it should be. Parents, parents dapat ang una naging encourage sa kids na gumawa, mag-soul winning. And then, also be involved in the ministry. Dapat tayo yung unang masaya pag may nawin na soul. I believe marami eksena ng ganito nangyari sa bahay. Sabi ng anak, Ma, may nawin akong soul. Dead ma. 
Ano break sana. Mapasado ka ng UP. Wow, nakakatuwa naman ang anak ko. Pero nung may nawin na soul, walang comment. That is happening. Masaya at proud tayo pag nakauno ang mga anak natin kaysa sa nag-reserve or nag-witness sila sa Panginoon. And with that, because we are not telling them that that's okay, we are communicating something to our kids also. Okay? We had to encourage them to study hard. We had to, but also we had to teach them to seek God first. And let them experience personally how God will do miracles whenever they put the Lord first. I'm not here to point fingers on people because as a future parent, I will also face the same dilemma. Kaya nga, ano, kasi lang, it's a reality that we must face. What are we communicating? We are stewards of these burdens and we must pray about it. Because also as a church clerk, I have noticed these trends. I have see, seen a batch of members who are involved in Sunday school staff, visitation, soul winning, young people leadership, and now... Statistically speaking, 90% of the young people leadership are homeboys. Ang homegrown, wala. Isa o dalawa lang. Okay? Homeboys, MKs, by the students. And the ones involving, involved in the Sunday school are also the same. The ones doing visitation, so reading, so young people leadership are also the same. Yung, however, yung parents, they were the ones involved before. At yung kids are starting to be involved somewhere else. Um, this is something na maging concern tayo para ma-observe natin so we can do something about it then. No? We have to look at it eh. I hope our kids can see that making money is not the most important thing in this world. And I hope that we learn, they learn from us that serving the Lord is the greatest privilege that we have. Okay? Parents, we have to ask ourselves, what am I doing to ensure that the faith delivered unto me will be passed on to the next? That's the question. Next, the scope. The scope. So, nakita natin yung manpower. Ang manpower ay Bible students, church. Ano nga ulit yung pangalawa? The duration from one generation to another, it must be continuous. The scope. The geographical expanse involved in the stewardship of the mysteries of God. Ano sinabi nito? All nations. So Matthew 28, 18-20. The church is given the challenge to reach all nations. But we cannot. Right? No one particular church can reach all. So when a missionary comes in to partner with us, he is actually helping us fulfill it as we partner with him. Sana may kita ng lahat ng members na yan. I hope no one, there are no members, <laughs> members anymore of Bethany will be thinking that when a missionary comes, he is begging. No. He is helping us fulfill the great commission that was entrusted to us. So we should be happy when they are here. Because they are helping us fulfill the great commission. Okay? They are not begging from us. We need them in order for our church to fulfill this great commission. I'd like to ask to reflect on this irony. There were those who were willing to leave their vocations, comfortable lifestyles in a country that is more economically stable than ours. So from there, they went to our country to live in faith and simplicity in order to share the gospel with us so that we might be saved, so that we might have this church right now that we have, that we may have the privilege of knowing more about God and serving Him. And when the time comes that we are challenged to go also in faith to another country, we say no because we are so busy trying to work hard in order to live comfortable lives in the country where these missionaries came from. Parang may ano dun. Sila umalis dun sa comfortable place, sinacrifice in vocation para mag-live ng simple life where we are, so we can have salvation, we can enjoy this church, enjoy the ministries, tapos tayo naman ang hinandaan, okay, meron naman ibang nangailangan din. Ay, I'm so busy because I'm working hard so that I can get to the place where they came from. And live comfortably there. Yung iniwan nilang buhay na comfort, I'm, that's my goal, to have that comfort that they have. 
ino ay wani dong. Okay? At isa pang problema dyan, what's worse is this, there are those who consider these missionaries as beggars. Not considering that because it's one of these people, because of one of these people, so-called beggars, kaya tayo nagkaroon ng gospel message dito in the first place. Because one was willing to come over. Tapos ang trato natin sa mga to ay ano, hindi. Dahil nga sa mga people na yan, kaya tayo nakarinig. Tapos when it's our time to support them, we forget them. And what if kinalimutan din sila ng mga people in the past, ng churches nila? Hindi din na saan nakalating sa atin yung gospel. Okay? So we ought to pray for these missionaries because it was when they were given the challenge they took heed. It's because of them that we have the gospel in the first place. It was through them. We ought to be ready to go if and when the ball is passed on to us. Sabi nga, you know, not everyone is called to go, but every Christian ought to consider and struggle with the possibility. And the least we can do is give. We can pray, we must be ready to go, and the least we can do, the least na, is to give. Hindi na nga tayo pupudalun. The least we can do is give. Um, I also had this experience, no, humbling reflection sa aking pagbiyahe. Uh, naalala ko when I first went to L.A., sa biniro ko ng kuya ko, he made some biro. Ano masasabi ko sa U.S.? Ang daming puti, no? Gusto ko sabihin sa kanya. Actually, hindi masyado. Mas maraming Hispanics. Mas maraming Mexicans doon. In fact, L.A. Baptist Church is 80 to 90% Hispanic. Tapos the rest, yung English congregation, majority pa doon Pinoy. Tapos may ilang white, and may ilang uh, African-American. Okay? So, I, I was able to attend Long Beach Missions Conference. At ito yung na-notice ko. Minsan kasi, galing tayo sa Pinas, and we have, been re- we have been hearing that the Philippines is the next, uh, uh, catches the baton, and it's the one bringing the gospel to other parts of the world. So, it kind of rubbed up on me. So, pagdating ko doon, ay tayo mga Pilipino, gamit na gamit, pag uh, dating sa ministry. So, I had a new church, doon ko na-realize na itong mga Hispanics din sa church, meron pala tayong kind of group of people na hindi na-release eh, yung South America. Na po yung mga Chile, Guatemala, Venezuela, yung mga South Americans na yan, sila yung pumupunta doon. So, I like, wow! I was thinking na, yes, we got, we are doing our part in reaching Asia, pero meron tayong mga pati hindi na reach at sila, the Hispanics na sila, it was, it's easier for them to reach these people. So nalito ako, I'm just a small part in the big picture. God is doing His work there. We're doing our work here. We ought not to think that our work here is much better than theirs because God is working everywhere. God can do His work everywhere. And that actually humbled me, no? Thank you, Lord. At willing ako dapat gawin ko anong pinagagawa sa akin. Okay? So we're just doing our part. And also, dun sa description natin ministry, anong binanggit natin una? The manpower, the church, the duration, from one generation to another, the scope, all nations. Now, I'd like to point this out. Kasi ang mga nababanggit, alam na natin most uh, yung Great Commission, so I'm just working out some things, no? na hindi pa masyado nababanggit. The transforming power, the transformation of those involved in the stewardship of the mysteries of God. Okay? We all know of God's saving and transforming power to the unsaved. Alam natin yun, walang question about that. Pag ang isang tao nakarinig at naligtas, nagbabago siya. But I will, what I would like to emphasize right now is God's transforming power to the one during the witnessing. There is also God's transforming power to the one obeying the Great Commission. Many people try to express their gratitude to a doctor, to a hospital, to a particular book or author, to a particular diet program, to a particular procedure and how it has transformed them radically or on how it has changed their lives. But actually what happened was 
they experience those benefits after religiously following the steps indicated in the diet program, the book, the program, or the doctor. Funny how many Christians are wondering in, hope, wondering in hopelessness, wondering why there is no change in their lives when they fail to follow the simple instructions of God's Word. Kaya naman talaga nagkakaroon ng change kasi nag-obey. Kaya nga yun yung nangyari doon sa ano. Pero talaga sa Word of God, we're just expecting change. Mas nakatuloy lang kayo sa Word of God, not really obeying it. Change can only happen when there is obedience. God's Word is always sufficient. I remember Pastor Nabi saying this, but this is only, it is only efficient to those who obey. God's wisdom is so infinite that He designed the Great Commission to transform not only the one witness to, but also the one witnessing. This is because the Great Commission has its own checks and balances. I'd like to share the testimony that I have. No? When I got saved in 1992, I have a problem with foul now. I was always with, uh, saying four-letter words almost in every sentence. No? Tapos na-witnessan ako, and I, pero matagal pa mawala. Kasi medyo hitin yun, mahili ka mag-mention ng four-letter words. So, nung time yun, so hindi pa agad nawala sa akin yun. And I remember attending the during midweek services in church in Los Salesbanos. No? Si Pastor Arnold Vardy has shared this message. If you want the Lord to change the way you speak, Go, obey Him. Win souls for Him. You won't be able to use your mouth for good and evil, and the evil will just have to go eventually. Hindi mo kakayanin na hindi yan mo ginagawit mo for two things. So I just obeyed. I joined in the soul winning activities. No? And then, in attending uh, Sunday morning and Sunday evening here in Bethany, I remember Pastor Nabi preaching in Ephesians 4.24. Can you open your Bibles there, please? Ephesians 4.24. And that he put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And I remember, no? Yung sa kanya sinasabi, don't just suppress, but supplant. Put on the new man. You have put off the old man, but put on the new man. Oh nga. So, ang thing dito, you have not just, the victory is not just in, be, in being dead to sin, but also alive in Christ. I remember his preaching, no, no? So, sabi nga, don't just avoid saying the wrong things. Say the right things. And you won't be able to say the wrong things. And it extends. Don't just avoid going to the wrong places. Go to the right places. In order not to do the wrong things, spend your time doing the right things. And that's the simple power of God's Word. Obey, and you'll see, you will be seeing your life transformed. Because when we are involved in the Great Commission, we would have to burn bridges. May mga bagay na kailangan mag-stop mangyari. Kaya magandang check and balance din yung binigyan ng Lord na involved sa Great Commission. Why? Practically speaking. Practical na lang na usapan. A person who is involved in soul reading, tracks his abuse and door knocking will have a tendency to be careful with his or her testimony and lifestyle. On the other hand, a person who has lifestyle issues will tend to avoid soul reading, tracks distribution and door knocking. Diba? Diba? Baka mamaya nag-aabot ka sa customer ka. Customer, customer ka pala, no? <laughs> okay? Nahihiya akong mag-abot-abot kung, ah, ikaw yung nasa bar kagabi, no? Ikaw yung ano. Diba? So, may practical checks dyan, eh. You become involved in the work that God has given. If you are involved, you would have to burn bridges. These have to be cut. And we see our lives changing. Kasi a person who's involved in these things, matapatitigil yan eh. So a good question to ask is, what hinders me from going out and doing these things? From going on BIC? From tax distribution and soul winning? Or have I developed a lifestyle and reputation that is inconsistent with my being a child of God, which deters me from being and from doing God's work? Baka mamaya meron pa akong alternative lifestyle. Nakakaiba pa. That's not consistent. Ay! Nag-aabot ka. Dito ko yung saucy-saucy, tapos ang taray-taray, tapos ngayon nag-aabot ka ng class. 
Uh, meron tayong alternative lifestyle. A child of God should be able to give witness for the Lord anytime. And that's what I noticed with these churches are doing these things. Ano nga naman, no? isang kristyano kaya dapat magawa yan. At pag nag-stop ka ng gumawa, mas madaling mag-creep in ang paggawa ng mga maling bagay. Kasi hindi ka pali. And when you do the Great Commission, you burn bridges. You cut off. Pigil na to. Pigil na yan. Ang ganda ng check of balance na ginagawa ng Lord with Christians who are doing the Great Commission. Because these things would have to stop. They cannot go together at the same time. Parents, we have to be happy when I, we see our kids involved in these activities. Kasi alam mong walang alternative lifestyle yung mga yan. Pag nakita mong nag-involved sa soul winning, nag-involved sa mass distribution, alam mong walang pinabagong lifestyle yan pag-abi. Kasi kaya nang mag- humarap kahit kanino. Diba? Hindi, hindi ka natatakot. I also notice, teaching all nations, evangelizing, sharing the gospel, soul winners have the best mouths. And non-soul winners have the foulest of mouths. I noticed that. Yung mga tao na mabilis na ka-open, mga ka-open, sila yung alamang ginagay soul winning. Have you noticed that? Kasi walang pakilang eh. Okay? Baptizing them. It's guiding them into obedience, identifying themselves in God's local body of believers and the fellowship of the church. The sweetest saints I know are those who bring people to church and are careful to have them integrated in the church. They are the sweetest people we know. Kasi ingat sila. And I met some people na alam ko for a time medyo masungit pero when they said bringing people to church at pag-aalaga na sila, naging sweet. I'm sure you have some illustrations in your mind. But I don't have to name names. Pero nung pag-sight ko silang mag, may naalagaan sila, maging sweet. Kasi kasama talaga sa design ng Panginoon yan. You just obey. And kasama yung transformation sa atin. Tinatransform din tayo ng Lord at the same time. Teaching them to observe all things. To obey the whole counsel of God. Nothing, sabi nga, there's a saying, nothing will make you appreciate your parents more than when you actually become one. Diba? Also, when we are starting to guide and disciple another, we get to have an ind- a deeper understanding of how God takes care of us. Kaya kasama talaga sa design ng Lord, when you do the Great Commission, He gives us a deeper understanding kung paano niya tayo inaalagaan. Kung ini-injan tayo ng disciple natin, we remind sa atin ng Lord, Teka nga ako. Hindi pa ako din ini-injan mo. And then we get to understand the Lord in the process. Yung wala kang control sa will ng disciple mo, yet you pray hard, pero gusto mong gumawa siya ng tamang decision, pero you can only pray kasi you cannot control the person. Hindi pa ganun din ang Lord sa atin, we hurt him whenever we disobey. So we get a deeper understanding of God whenever we follow Him and doing the Great Commission. So, ang ganda nang binibigay sa ating simple plan to become involved in the Great Commission and yet it will do wonders to us if we just obey. Minsan nag-atakata, ba't pa meron akong ganito? Ba't pa meron akong ganyan? Ba't ma- hindi ko tumawala-wala sa buhay ko? Because we're not obeying the simple plan. May involved ka lang pala doon matatanggal yung mga bagay-bagay nun in the process as you continue in obedience to God. Nagahanap pa tayo ng matinding self-help, matinding life transformation. You just don't obey. Simply obey. Last point. That's your favorite. That's also my favorite. Evaluation. Yes, as in any stewardship, there is an inventory, a tallying, and an accounting. And what can be said about that? First is that it is comprehensive. First Corinthians chapter four verses three to five. First Corinthians chapter four verses three to five. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own self, for I know nothing by myself, yet Am I not hereby justified? But he that judges me, judgeth me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring the light to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have the praise of God. 
comprehensive. It is comprehensive. The evaluation will be comprehensive. Yes, our efforts to share God's word na hindi natin pinapost sa FB counted yan sa Panginoon. God's evaluation sa atin. May mga efforts tayo minsan to share the gospel, to do, to obey the Lord, to disciple, to follow up, na hindi na, 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 hindi na kailangan i-broadcast or i-press to this ABS, ABN, or sa GMA Kapuso, or ito sa FB, or ito. Yet the Lord will see all these things because His evaluation will be comprehensive. He takes account of all the things that we do for Him. If you're a Christian, you're discouraged. Tapos sa tingin mo, wala nangyayari sa buhay mo. But you keep on obeying God. It is recorded. Nothing misses God's record book. Also, it will be revealed in time. And we have had these references now. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verses 18 to 21 and Judges chapter 2, 9 to 11. In time, kung tayo ay naging faithful at inalagaan natin, ensure natin that our generation will be okay, it will be revealed in time. And then challenge na balak kong maiwan sa atin is this, how are we ensuring that the next generation, the next batch that we have right now will have the same zeal, same heart for the Lord. Baka mamaya sa atin lang ito. Tapos mamaya yung mga anak natin, bisibisiyo na sa ibang bagay. And we'll begin to forget the Lord. Lastly, about that evaluation. It is first comprehensive, it will be revealed in time, and it requires faithfulness. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Are we faithful to what God has entrusted to us? To become distributors of the mysteries of God to the next generation, distributors of the Word of God to the people who don't yet know these things, the Great Commission. Nakakalungkot if the OICO nagagawin ng 75th year anniversary ng Bethany would not include your kids, our kids. I hope yung next batch kasama pa rin. May kita yung, ay, naging active pa rin pala yung mga alak nito. Hindi lang nag-iwan sa isang batch yung commitment sa Panginoon. Pero yung mga anak nagpapuloy sa commitment sa Panginoon because they see that everyone is very much into the Great Commission. I also like us to reflect on our involvement there. Baka mamaya na iiwan na lang natin sa certain people ang siyang gumagawa ng Great Commission. Before tagad, ay, tawagin sa ganito. Tawagin sa, kasi ako din, ganun na nasa isip ko eh. Baka mamaya, hindi lang ako may ganun problema. It should be the church na involved. Hindi lang iilan. Kasi yan ay gawain ng church. Evangelistic meetings, soul winning, funeral services, that may, may involved na tayo natin. Yes, Bible students should be involved, but it's not confined to them. Also, yung transforming power. Ano kayang, gano'n kaya karaming family problems ang nasolve na sana at hindi na sana nangyari if everyone was just con- consistent with doing his or her soul winning work. Kasi nag-iingat siya dahil nag-a-forward siya. Kaya hindi na niya binigyan ng puwang ang kasalanan ko sa buhay niya. Kasi ako ay nag-a-forward. Iniingatan ko ang reputation ko as a steward of the Word of God. Madalas, we don't involve ourselves. And when we don't involve ourselves with becoming ministers of the Word of God, pag kumatok si sin, sa pangananapin po, wala namang nakakaalam. And then later on, andiyan na lang yung regrets. Let's burn bridges and let's hold on into obeying the word of God that we have. Let's all stand up. Before we go to the Lord in prayer, I just like to recite the words of a 
popular song that we often sing. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. May the fire of our devotion light their way. May the footprints that we leave lead them to believe. And the lives we live inspire them to obey. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. Dear God and Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for reminding us of this responsibility that we have as stewards of the mysteries of God. That we have to make sure, Lord, that things are understood by our children. Things are understood by the next generation. That the miracles that we experience by our generation will not end in our generation, but the next generation will have new miracles, experience you anew in their lives. Lord, it has been the story of many churches all around the world that there is one generation that loves you and serves you. However, the next generation finds no meaning, finds no desire, finds in themselves no desire to obey you. They are just talking about the miracles of their lives and their parents or their grandparents, but they are not experiencing the miracles that you are doing in their lives. Lord, we pray, O Lord, that each generation of Bethanite will be the first generation. We get to experience you anew. And our kids will be more involved on the thing that you have entrusted to us. Lord, because most of the time we are just happy. Whenever they stand before the graduation stage as they graduate from college. But we are not concerned that they would also be victorious in standing before the judgment seat of Christ. We are more concerned with things of this world rather in obeying you. Lord, help us to have this commitment to you and to have that burden to really have our children have the same commitment and that this, this be passed on to the next generation. Thank you, Lord, for certain young people who we see are still consistent in our obeying you and are very much active but we also pray for those who are not yet we just trust O oh Lord that you would also touch them, show them how a very personal God you really are and these miracles need not just be experienced by their parents, by their parents but they can also have the same help us also realize that we have enough of instructions that we need whenever if we just follow the great commission you will just do wonders in our lives as we obey you Thank you, Lord, for these reminders. And we just commit all these things to pray. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's remain standing. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. Uh, we will ask our uh, instrumentalists to play uh, the music. Uh, thank you very much, Brother uh, Giorgio Solano, for this uh, timely reminder. And um, I would like to pose another question. Uh, the title of the message is Our Work as a Steward. Uh, sana po ang tanungin natin ay uh, uh, sarili natin, no? Yung my work as a steward. Hindi yung, ano, yung our work. Parang collective yun, eh. Di ba? Lahat tayo. Pero... Uh, since I uh, know the message uh, involved every one of us, the church, a dapat um, evaluating natin, uh, let's make an introspection and uh, ask ourselves, uh, my work as a steward, how is it uh, with your Lord? Uh, ano, ako, ano po ang ano, katayuan ng aking paglilingkod sa inyo? Maybe we could ask ourselves that question. Meron po bang ganyan? We would like to uh, come and uh, 
Lahatayo guilty tayo di sa ano di sa sa mensahe. We have been na no, we have been na comfortable in many areas of our spiritual lives. And yun na na. Sabi nga nung ano nung misero. Let the Bible college students, the Christian college students, do the ano the visitation, do the soul winning. We have been guilty. Lahatayo halos ay tinamaan and. Praise God that our speaker had some exposures in many churches in America and Lord, even here in our country. And yun nga, sana maiya no, maisaling lahi natin yung ating mga minanang mga bagay-bagay mula sa salita ng Dios sa mga susunod na hinerasyon. Yang yang sana mengiari, because yang kau yang binangit, sa kaya nga nak kerum semula cembuk untuk jenderonomi, para ma ituro sa mga kabataan ang misteri sebab and hindi pa sedente ang ano ang namin saya ngayon dali, tungkol po sa our work as steward and thank you, brother Jojo, for this reminder. Nothing happens by accident. Everything comes from the Lord, and this has been relayed to Brother George Solano by the Lord. Kung ano yung mensaheng ito babahagi sa atin ngayong hapon, ngayong gabi, and praise God for Brother George. Thank you so much, and I just pray that somehow, medyo parang wake up call para sa atin ito na meron po tayong responsibilidad na gampanan. At totoo, ang Great Commission po ay hindi pinagkatiwala sa Bible College students at kung kanikanino, kundi sa church. And who, what composes the church? The believers, tayo. No? So, again, thank you so much, Brother Jojo, for that message. At this time, maupo muna tayo sa sandali. At uh, pakikinggan natin ang um, magbibigay po ng uh, uh, magbabasa po ng mission letters and uh, the one uh, assigned is uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Mario Do Campo uh, who is uh, fresh from uh, his uh, trip. Sawadika. Okay, that's the greeting in uh, Thailand. No? And... Uh, I don't know if we have a Thailand here, but uh, I will be reading to you uh, seven mission letters, basically six plus one. Well, one is the my report. So uh, the first one is uh, from uh, Timothy Su Lian Man in Creative Resisted Access Nation. Dear friend, God is working for his people here in Myanmar. The blessings, they have some Bible students from East Myanmar, Laos, and China border. Missionary Samuel Kian Lin was used by God to win three Buddhists and nominal Christians to Christ. Amen? Missionary Paul Chik Kai serving the Lord as interim church planter, and they were able to buy a piece of land of 120 feet by 40 feet at Humman B. Okay, the prayer requests school building for their Bible school, provision for their school needs. They need classrooms, 